Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Welcome to Art on the Creek. We are in mid-December 2023 and this is my home studio in Parker, Colorado. Welcome! Thanks for tuning in today. You know, it is review day and I like to introduce a new product to you, but today I'm going to introduce one that you probably have seen before and if you haven't used it, maybe you've been curious about it. I'm talking about the set of six Derwent water-soluble sketching pencils. These are so great, and if you are a watercolorist, I really think you should get them. <laughs> and I'm going to go over a really fun painting to show you why. And what I'm going to do with that is bring back the, uh, the Graphitint pencils, because I did a review on these before, and I don't think I had quite the right paper. So paper matters, and I always say there's no bad art supplies maybe it's just that you're using it not to its best advantages. So let's revisit the Graphitint pencils and let's take a look at the Derwent water-soluble sketching pencils. These are so much fun and they fit in a stocking. <laughs> Before we continue though, please subscribe to Art on the Creek if you haven't done so already by clicking on that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell too so that you'll always know when I launch a new tutorial or a product review. Of course, if you do enjoy content like this, make sure that you give it a like, leave a comment, or share it with your friends. If you'd really like to take your art skills to the next level, I would encourage you to consider a membership with Art on the Creek. When you're a member, or patron, of my channel, your membership includes an extensive library of tutorials covering drawings and paintings of a variety of subjects, not just beautiful Colorado, and also in many different art media. You'll have full and unlimited access to an ever-growing member's library of tutorials and reviews, as well as the opportunity to receive guided feedback and critique from me. And also, you'll have direct input into which art technique or medium you'd like to learn more about as a member, as well as access to free art supplies. All of that and more is included in your membership, and it's all very conveniently right here on YouTube. There is a link in the description below that will go over all the membership details. But if you still have any questions, just ask me in the comments and I'll be sure to help you out. Now, let's move on to today's subject, shall we? The very first thing I want to mention is I'm not sponsored by Derwent or Hannah Mule. I just really like these products. Today, I want to take a look at one of my new favorite sketchbooks is this Bamboo uh, by Hannah Mule. It's amazing for mixed media paper. But this set here, very, very simple set. It is a set of six water-soluble sketching pencils. It's just your basic set of pencils, and let me see if I can get it out of the box here. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit stuck in there. I'm going to have to push it from the other end. There we go. comes in a nice tin, so you can take it with you, and uh, the, the lid fully opens up on the tin, which I think is nice because then you, got, you have a little palette. You've got some mixing space. comes with a serviceable pencil sharpener. Um, I'm not going to use that though <laughs> for this one, but uh, the pencil sharpener is included. So if you're on the code, that really is helpful. And you get two each. There are two uh, each of HB, 4B, and 8B. Now, the higher the number of the B, the blackness, the softer the pencil. So you can see here you have a light wash, a medium wash, and a dark wash, which is another way to think about it. And I really like that uh, they label that on there for people who may not know the numeric value of hardness. So this sketchbook has turned out to be a complete win on every single page, and I'm not that far into it, but I have Irene at Inkworks to thank for showing me the sketchbook because I would not have purchased it had I not seen her use it in one of her videos. So I'm gonna put a link to her channel and it's not the first time I've linked to one of her videos in my descriptions. I, she's just an excellent source, and um, she's up in the Pacific Northwest, and um, I really like her. I like everything about her channel, and I love her artwork. So um, she's got a lot of wisdom. So if you ever need any questions answered uh, about fountain pens or want to see some really beautiful art, go check out Inkworks. That's Irene. So here's what we're doing. We're going to use this uh, bamboo sketchbook, and I am in love with this sketchbook. I, it's mixed media paper, but you would never know it. It just doesn't act like other mixed media paper. It acts like cotton. The bamboo is magnificent, and um, I'm just simply thrilled with it. Um, we're just going to write out here. I couldn't read if it was a 6B or an 8B. I had to look at the box. <laughs> it is an 8B, and it's just so lovely to color with. All of these, the 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 graphite lays down really, really easily and uh, very simple to use. And um, they would be lovely drawing implements. They're very simple to erase as well. 
I have here a Princeton uh, Velvet Touch angular shader. Now, normally I don't really use the Velvet Touch unless I'm painting with gouache or watercolor pencils. The reason that I like using uh, Taclon fibers with watercolor pencils or gouache is because you can really control the amount of water that you're putting down. If you're going to use something like an imitation squirrel or uh, imitation Kalinsky or genuine squirrel, genuine squirrel or genuine Kalinsky, they're going to hold a lot more water and you may not be able to control things as well. Um, and when you're dealing with something like this, I have found that you just need to have that slower release of water. So I highly recommend a Taclon fiber if you're working with gouache or uh, watercolor pencils of any kind. So you can see the, the tonal values in these differ greatly. Now that pigment is not going to be completely dissolved, but it's pretty good. So that is a characteristic that you need to keep in mind when you're uh, drawing with these and using the, the wash effect. Your initial line is going to stay visible. That can work extremely to your advantage and we're going to try something like that here coming up uh, in a little drawing that I'll do. But what I wanted you to see here is just the difference in value. Now I put a little bit more water down on that eight than I did on the other two, but uh, it really does come out quite a bit darker, quite a bit uh, richer than the other two. So the HB pencil now, I'm, I'm using the pencil dry to go over wet area to see if we can get some of that, uh, the drawing, the graphite to come off because sometimes, you know, if you do a pencil on top of a wet surface, you can't even get anything to put down. And in all cases it does. And then the lines on the top of the swatches are after I have dipped the pencil into water. I think the water's just off camera there, but you can see I dipped the pencil into water and then you can really get some beautiful soft lines. They're, they just have a slightly softer edge to them. It might be kind of hard to tell on camera, but, um, and of course it will vary with the kind of paper you use, which is something I want to mention because I'm going to bring in some uh, Derwent Graphitent pencils here in just a moment. And what I want to do with that is to revisit the review that I did of those earlier because I used a paper that I didn't like and I um, was just kind of uh, okay with the with the result. This paper, this bamboo paper works beautifully with the Derwent Graphitent. And I think if you were to use just about any other paper than what I used, <laughs> you probably have great luck with the Graphitent. So uh, most Derwent products uh, like this, the ink tents, the ink blocks, the... Um, uh, any kind of uh, pencil that is water soluble, you can use them in many ways. Now, the first way where we, we uh, wrote on the paper and then we used water to blend it, that's definitely a way that you can use it. Here, what I did was I shaved off some of that graphite onto the palette, the lid of the box, and then got a wet brush and picked it up and just use it like paint. And that is certainly something you can do. That little gold circle at the bottom there, that's a mason jar lid, and I've got some table salt in there. We're going to see if we can do some table salt effects with this. In the leaf, you'll notice I did a lifting off technique. Perfect. Worked really, really well. Now while this is damp, let's go ahead and put some table salt on there. It's just regular table salt, and uh, we'll let that sit a while. But what I want to show you first, let me put the salt away here, and then I can pick this up and bring it closer to the camera. What I want to show you is how velvety soft these lay down. Isn't that lovely? Look at that leaf. It would just be beautiful in shading portraits, something where you need a very delicate, soft approach. You could do florals, you could do botanicals. Uh, clouds would be beautiful in this. And there are those pencil lines where I, I dip them in water up above where I wrote the 4B, HB, and 8B, and then uh, writing on the wet swatches. So you can see that you've really got translucency, softness, but you also have rich color. So these are really fun to work with. Let's go ahead and let that dry and then let's see what happens here. So you can see I've been playing a little bit more here while that salt was drying. I got out the Derwent Graphitents because I really do want to give these another shot. Um, I love these pencils and I know that they can be amazing. I just think I need the right paper to use them on and this is a very good paper to do. So I recommend this combination. Okay, the colors that I'm going to use are Port and Ivy here. And look, I, I did the same basic things that I just did with the pencils. I uh, made a wet wash and uh, washed it over the graphite. Now, I don't know, I don't think this smudges. Well, maybe a little. It does. Let's try just really being aggressive. Yeah, it'll definitely smudge in between. So it still has its pencil properties to it. But the salt effect, 
is beautiful on all three and that leaf I was able to put the uh, the ivy down that left side of the leaf and really just tint that quite nicely now there's some slight shadows on that still frame that I showed you so I just want to pull this up to the camera again and you can see the salt effects also work on the graphitant um, let's see how well these erase. I'm using a kneaded eraser here to erase the little smudges that kind of went on the outside of uh, what I wanted and it picks it right up. So that works great. This is a Derwent battery operated eraser. Of course, everything coincidentally happens to be Derwent here. They're not sponsoring me. I just like Derwent products. In fact, I've got a Derwent playlist and I will put a link to that right up here in the corner as well. Um, just wanted to show you that you can lift off with eraser as well and add highlights that way. So let's brush that off and let me see if this kneaded eraser can get rid of that smudge and pretty well. Yeah, it does. It, uh, let's see if we can lift off and create some subtle highlights that way. And we sure can. Um, one thing I like to use this Derwent eraser for is uh, making highlights in pupils or little small areas. And you can do that very easily and it can pick up multiple layers here. You can see it can go through both the graphitant and the sketching pencil without any issues at all. So these are very versatile. I am happy. <laughs> these are easy to use and I am ready to get going here on creating some art. So let's find a photo and see what we can come up with. Oh, I want to show you this first. This is a little, uh, a pencil, excuse me, it's an eraser and it is by Tombow. It's the Mono Zero uh, eraser. And what it is, is a very, very fine eraser. And you have these uh, long skinny refills you can get for it. And you can just erase little small areas if you didn't want to go the battery operated route. The pencil sharpener that I'm using today is a manual one. It's the one I keep on my desk down here. It's the Afmat Long Point. And um, these are already sharpened, but I want a uh, narrower point on the end. So you just push it in and it's got some kind of a resist there. So multiple sizes of pencils will work. And then we're just going to give it a sharpen. And then you will feel it kind of release and not have any more resistance. And that's when you rotate the handle backwards and you bring your pencil out and it gets this beautiful point. On the inside of the bucket of shavings, there is a little pocket of uh, several sheets of sandpaper in there where you can uh, make that a finer point. Uh, so you can really get into some good detail. Um, I saw another YouTube artist, I think it was Sandy Alnock, who she has this pencil sharpener as well. She really likes it. She just uses an emery board, which makes a lot of sense because I use something like that or a sandpaper block to sharpen pastels or colored pencils. Um, so you don't have to pull that bucket of shavings out and maybe spill shavings all over the place. So I found a nice, two little nice pictures on, uh, on Unsplash. One was of mistletoe and the other one was of these kind of antique looking jingle bells. So what this what these pencils make me think of are the kind of artwork that came out in the original publication of Alice in Wonderland or any other Dickensian novel uh, for that matter, which made me think of, you know, A Christmas Carol and um, the early 1800s drawings of Santa Claus, how they were done on an ink block. And then, you know, the ink is, is painted over that ink and wash basically, isn't it? <laughs> um, I'm sure there's a lot of other techniques involved that I don't know about printing, but at any rate, it's that style of art that I was thinking of, that vintage look where you have just your basic lines and then you have shading to go with that. And sometimes that shading has a tonal quality, which I'm going to pick up in the graphitant pencils. So let me speed through this drawing here of the mistletoe and the bells. I found some really, um, a uh, picture of some really antique looking jingle bells. And uh, let's see what we can come up with. All of that drawing was done with the light wash, the, um, the HB pencil. So you have two of those, remember, in this set. And um, I, it's just convenient. They're sold individually and they're not that expensive. I think they're like a dollar and a quarter uh, a piece. But, uh, the, and I'll, I'll put some text up at the bottom of the screen here if I'm mistaken by that. But, um, and I will also put the price of this set of six so that you can see if it's something you want to, you want to pick up. Because if you've got this in a water brush, you'd be good to go. You could uh, sketch something over your lunch break and, uh, and uh, you know, give it a little bit of a watercolor effect. So now I'm going to go in with varying hardnesses and sketch some shading a little bit. I've moved on to the medium, the 4B for this portion. So in that sketching then, that's all I used was the, uh, the light wash, the medium wash. Now let's go ahead and get into some paintbrush activity here. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just using water 
on a Taclon paintbrush. And this one is by King Art. I like these too. This is a gold Taclon number four round. Um, it's held the point really well and I find myself reaching for it a lot. So this is a good brush to have for gouache or something like this if you like. Uh, I will link to those as well. That's their, um, the King Art premium brushes. I really like them. Uh, and they don't break the bank either. So what I want to do here is just get this shading in. So when you're sketching with these, you want to sketch more or with a darker, uh, with a higher number, wherever you want the shading to be darker. So this is only one way that you can use these. So because you can use them with a palette, you can also liquefy and lighten the wash uh, or leave it more intense by putting more you know, having it more concentrated. Um, these are really fun to play with. And that is really what it feels like is that I'm playing here. I'm really just having a lot of fun getting the initial shading in. So this is a kind of approach to art where you have your, uh, your shading in first and then you're gonna come back in with the color. So let's speed up the rest of the shading process and then we'll get to the color. Now, even though this is sped up, I think you can really see how easy it is to really create dimension and shape and form by using different kinds of shading, which is really the backbone of art. Whenever you're making anything um, look like it has shape and form, you need to do that with shadows. And you can see I went in on the branch with some of that darker one, the number 8B, and really added some weight to that branch. So we'll just finish up these bells a little bit here, and now I'll give it a dry. And then let's see what we can add to this. I think it might be time to bring out those graphitin pencils. I've got this really sped up because this is uh, meant to be a review, not really a, uh, a tutorial on how to do this. But if you would like a tutorial on something like this, let me know in the comments and um, we can do that in the weeks ahead. The color that I'm going down with first is Ivy. And you can see I just use it like a colored pencil. And then instead of using Gamsol to blend it, I'm just using water. So this is so easy and so simple. You could use these products and sit in front of your TV have your sketchbook in your lap, reach over for a pencil, do your coloring, and then use a water brush and just blend it that way. You can also do this, which is why I like that that tin comes, the lid comes off the tin completely. You just paint with a wet brush on the tip of the pencil, and then you can create a little puddle of watercolor for yourself. Going in with the bells, I've got the port and the aubergine. Oh, and on the, uh, on the mistletoe there, on the berries, I used a steel blue. So I left the openings of the bells because I didn't want to go over it uh, use the black to go over this and have it be kind of muddy. I did want to have the colors still look as clean as possible because they do have a really soft muted look to them and that's what gives them their really vintage quality. So it's a neat characteristic about this and now I'm going in with that uh, that liquefied uh, uh, sketching pencil and for that I used the darkest one in here. You can see I'm doing it there and I'm mixing a little bit of the blue in and just getting some more shading and dimension on these little, little squarish looking jingle bells. And now I've just got the uh, the string that attaches everything together. I've just got that that I'm painting over and I'm going to go in with the autumn brown and kind of give that a little bit of a color. So now for the background, I've gone back to that uh, Velvet Touch, the angle brush, and I'm going in with the ocean blue. I just want to see what all we can accomplish here because I have an idea. So it's a small brush for the area that I'm using, but that's intention. Excuse me, that's intentional. I want to see what this looks like when you have intentional brush marks involved. And I ended up really liking the way that this looks. I like how it looks kind of rustic um, because I thought it kept with the vintage feel. Now you could go over this with more layers, you could do a whole lot more, but what I decided to do was this. I've got my, the Port uh, Derwent Gravitant Pencil in my left hand and a wet brush in my right, and I am just using that wet brush to kind of flick over the pencil and get some splashes down. What's really fun about this is that the paper that is still a little bit damp. So I'm also going to get some cauliflower blooms as I'm doing this. And I'm just going to go around and do several different colors here. So let's speed this up and see how this evolves. The only thing I can say is I had so much fun with this. I didn't want to stop making splatters. <laughs> and I really am loving that it's still kind of alive on the paper. I'm really liking how everything is just really coming into play and the colors are dancing and playing together. That's my absolute favorite thing with any kind of water-based media is how you can get them to really interact and move and play and really be alive on your paper right before your eyes. 
And now that I've had a second to get everything dry and kind of cleaned up, you can see I'm going back in and uh, doing another coat on the, the port here, on the bells. I thought that they kind of looked like they got lost in there a little bit. Um, and it's probably just because they're so dark. So I want to try and brighten these up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is to mix that pigment in a little puddle over there and then come on the bell and paint it that way. And then let's do the same thing with just a little bit of the aubergine. There we go. I'm just finishing that up and you can see it's exactly the same process. I just made a little puddle by using a wet brush to uh, run it across the tip of the pencil there and uh, made a little puddle of pigment and finished up the shadows. And now let's give this a dry because I think we need to go in and make some high highlights. You know, I have to laugh at myself. I, this is not my favorite uh, pen, my acrylic pen here that I'm using because it has an odor to it. It's like got, got a real chemical scent to it. Um, so I'm gonna try and be real quick here. <laughs> I think my tagline should be Art on the Creek, the lazy artist, because it literally is the one that I could reach. I don't see the one that I wanted to use. I know it's here on my desk somewhere. I could also call myself a, an organized artist, but you know what? I'm a creative thinker and I, my workspace kind of looks like the chaos in my mind. <laughs> So how about you? Is your studio where you work, is it really neat? And um, are you a real meticulous person? I'm, I'm more of a dive in and make a big splash kind of creative. <laughs> but let me know in the comments what kind, of, uh, what kind of work area you have. Is it neat? Is it tidy? Do you have to pick it up? Do you have to put it away? Do you keep all your things in a little bag and only bring them out to work on your kitchen table when you have time? All of those are wonderful ways and, uh, you know, whatever you've got is terrific, but I'm just curious how many of you are as chaotic as I am because I, <laughs> I feel like I can't be the only one. I'm going to add some highlights on this branch and then let's take an up close look and see what we've created. Finishing up the little highlights on the bells here and I really like this, you guys. I think it really has that feel of a vintage Christmas and by maybe a Dickensian Christmas or a Victorian Christmas. So if that's something that uh, suits your aesthetic, then I think that these materials will really help you achieve creating art like that. It's the Derwent Water Soluble Sketching Pencils along with the Derwent Graphitint. And you know, all of these Derwent products really kind of go together. They have uh, very similar palettes. We've got the, the Graphitint and we've got the, the Graphitint in pans. And then there's also the Derwent drawing pencils. So I've got a whole Derwent playlist that I will link to down in the description or at the end of this video. And you guys can take a look at everything, but let's take a close up look and see what we've got here. So we're gonna go back to a little cinema verite. So forgive my, <laughs> my shaky hands here. This is it. These are all the supplies I used. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six graphitant pencils and uh, the three of the water soluble sketching pencils, uh, two paint brushes and one sketchbook. And look at this, isn't this fun? And this is just mistletoe and some bells. Uh, you know, if you guys wanna do anything at all that involves these soft muted tones, I recommend this bamboo paper and these Derwent, Derwent water soluble sketching pencils are a great place to start. We'll see you guys, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season and take care. We'll see you next week. Bye now.